Right, let's go on then. Let's move. Dicha, what is your bad point? Oh, we are moving to Polish CS right now. I mean, I want to talk about nine because outside of them and few Polish players like me, Shuhy and other players, we don't have anything. And I think we have a lot of good players, but we just have no idea how to build the teams because some of the players, they don't like each other or they are just playing for money. And I can straight say that most yep. of them, they are just staying in like tier two organizations. They are just farming these online shit events. They are not even winning them, but they are just getting the paychecks. It's not even much, but they are still doing it. Um, th there was this time when uh, I forget which, I think it was people like, like, okay, or the teams were AGO, I want to say Anonimo, and uh, there might have been one more. Back where then there I was a lot, but right oh. now there is nothing. But back then it was Ago, Anonimo, there was also King Wisla, Queen, Krakow. but it was like, yeah. yeah, there was also Visla, but then they switched to nine but i have no idea what was before that but yeah there was a lot of lineups but the problem is people are not sticking together they are yes. changing like it's two months they don't see the results they for example they didn't qualify for a fucking major and they are like ah we need to switch something it's not working but how can like how do you want to be consistent if you are changing one two three players every single month it's never gonna work yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to remark on, the fact that I remember in that time there was like, like so many, like AG, like those few teams I just mentioned, it was like I would watch them one tournament and then it was almost just like a month later I'd catch them again on a tier two tournament and I'd be like, I, I thought I like I just felt like I couldn't keep up. I, I thought I actually had like short term memory loss or something because I was just seeing them and then seeing their names on other teams and I was just like, surely sparrow played for this guy like on this team or whatever like i don't know i just i'm just throwing a name out there i don't know if he was yeah. the one swapping all the time but like i thought he was playing with them and then it was it just became in a weird way hard to keep up because i was just never really sure which polish team in the tier two space was the best it's cool to see that nine it has has risen above and that they've found consistency i hope that they get over what i think is land nerves where it just feels like what i watch them do online versus what they do on land is completely different and i we've got a point coming for that later but it's all good it's all good oh just okay. don't go too yeah, hard gonna... on that one <laughs> If we're going to talk about that later, we'll yeah, talk about that later. Good. But yeah, I think I think I think he already really highlighted the main point, which is that even I was recognizing casually watching these tier two Polish teams just whenever I see them on and just turning a stream on randomly that I'd be I would be confused because I just felt like this is just roster mania every other month. Yeah, I've got a few points on this one. Like, first of all, I think he did, he did a really key thing there for people who aren't from the Polish scene by explaining that there is a type of player that's been around for a while, but they just play for salary now. Because that's actually a really misunderstood part about Counter-Strike in like both Central Europe and especially, I mean, now maybe not so much because of the war thing, but Eastern Europe, it was the case especially. Like I've known players who told me, mate, even if I actually didn't care at all about CSGO, I wouldn't quit if, as long as someone offered me a gig because like... I spent my whole life playing CS. Like, I don't have, like, a career waiting for me. And so why would I want to go and basically, like, either for reals work in an office or, like, a supermarket when I could do this job and make... If people don't know, I don't know what the current, like, average man's wage is, but I'm going to guess if you make, like, a 1,000 euros a month playing video games, you're probably still making a pretty good living, right, Dika? Yeah. It should yeah. Be, yeah, it's going to be way better than, like, the average 22-year-old guy who has, you know, no big school qualifications and no careers. That's actually a good job to have. But the problem is, though, if you just play it like it is your job, I know when you say that, it sounds like it'd be great. Like, oh, it's going to be really professional. No, but you, what makes people great at games is the passion, is to, is to play, to have a dream and to, and to grind in a certain way and to look at the example of someone and imagine. It's not to go like, right, oh, um, oh it's 9 a.m., right, uh, start the scrims, yeah, playing them. Oh, I got 10 kills. 
emails. Yeah, whatever. Got 15. Oh, nice one. Got 20. Yep. Yeah. Oh, 25. All right. Clock off for the day. 5 p.m. See you guys. See you tomorrow. Like, that can't... That, you're never going to be a good team doing that. Like, that's that's too cynical. So, unfortunately, there are actually even some good names and some veteran names who do play like that, unfortunately. And some of them might tell you, like, oh, if I got the chance to start a big team, you know, I'd try it. It's like, you're not going to get it, though, mate, because you've been around too many years now and people know you're cynically playing like this as just a mercenary for hire. So, unfortunately, that's not the sort of person that someone buys into. You want to, Even if you're a team, you're buying into a dream of, you know, this player could transform our squad and become even better than they are. And then the other thing is... One thing I hate is when people take regions that have a decent amount of players. Like, Poland always has loads of people playing the game, like, actively and playing matchmaking and tier three and four and five. It's, like, it's not that there aren't good players, but I thought the thing you said at the beginning, let's talk about that a bit, about the fact that, like, no one really knows what to do with the players. That's the key thing to me, Diha, because there's clearly enough actually good players. Like, if I, like, even if you look at some of the players who aren't in the Polish scene of other years, like, obviously, MHL right now was left to scene technically. This guy's clearly got the fucking skills. You go watch his it's talent's clearly there. If everyone remembers Miku, who was in all those teams the last few years, there's a reason why he kept getting picked up in international squads. He's a good player. You think, obviously, of Dikai himself, who plays in the squad right now in Ents. You have other players. I mean, some of them are in the Polish team, but there's clearly talent there. Rallon was over in Into the Breach. Like, there's, there's veterans, there's younger players. There's all types of players. The one thing I do notice, though, that is missing, that's what I want to ask you, is this. A lot of good teams are built by the IGL, and that is the one thing I feel like is missing, right? Is there actually are there actually good Polish IGLs? That's the one I wonder about. Like me for this answer, but I don't <laughs> think so. That's the problem because all of the teams, like when when we are building the team, we don't really have in-game leaders, and some random people they are saying like, yeah, I will, I can try to be in-game leader, but then right. after like two or three weeks, they are like. Yes. It's not for me anymore. Like I don't have good stars doing it. I don't like it anymore. And uh, this is where the problems begin because I think when you are young and you want to show yourself, you will play for stats. And that's, that's how it works, at least in the young teams. They are not really playing to win. They are not playing to achieve anything. They are just playing for, for stats. And also they want to win money instantly. And also... Uh, when there is like a small event and they are winning it, for example, they are instantly asking about more salary. They are instantly oh, right. asking, mm -hmm. like, we, we are looking for Orc, for example. They are pracking for two weeks. This is just the example. I don't yeah, mean yeah. anyone. No, no. But people people are just pracking for two or like three weeks and they are instantly writing on Twitter, we are looking for organization. If someone is blah, 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 you can contact us. I'm like, why are you looking for Orc if you are playing for two weeks together? Like, you don't even know each other. You will probably leave this mix in about the fucking two weeks. Like, people, like, don't know what to do. Yes. They are instantly looking for money. They are instantly looking to to just be saved, to, 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 to just have a salary. And then maybe we will do something more. But the first thing which is coming to mind for all of these teams from my POV is that they want to be saved. They want to have money. And then... Let's see what we will do. Exactly. Oh, and two other things to say. One, I could, you know, have thrown in the name Mantu there, but he's the one who put that UK flag on, mate. When he put that UK flag on, we're claiming him. We 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 haven't got <laughs> enough good players right now. We listen. You can have Smoothie if you want. You can if you can get his papers. We'll trade you Mantu for Smoothie or whatever. And then the other thing I was going to throw in there is I actually thought the other key point you made is that one, which is that people sort of get too egotistical, and then if they have any problems, they just kick someone out immediately. The reason why that's a killer to me is. Because people never understood this. The incredible thing about the legendary Virtus Pro lineup wasn't that, like, a lot of fans never got this dude. They really thought, oh, they don't change players because there's just no good players there. No, you idiot. They didn't change players because they know the second you change players, like all of like our strength of the experience, it all starts to degrade. And now we've got to bring this new guy in and we've got to get him up to speed and we've got to have a similar pro. And so maybe he brings like, let's say 10% more aim than, I don't know, Taz or something. He doesn't bring all the years of experience Taz has though and how to deal with this guy and what to do with that. So I think that is actually the lesson of, this, of the Polish scene that was never learned is like, your heroes won all those years. Yeah, they had the hard times by going through all the tough times together and learning and figuring out a new role and how can I adapt to it. Like, basically, one of the cleverest things they did was... Basically, every time they changed IGL, that probably should have been a kick. But instead of a kick, it was more like, right, 
maybe you can be IGL and then I can be the lurker or something, you know, and they would find a way to make it work. And I always thought like that, that was actually very admirable because yes, they had their downtimes, but has there, was there ever a team in the history of the game? The answer is no, I was there the whole time. There was never a team came back to the top as many times as that squad did. That five-man lineup for real went all the way down and then came all the way back. I'm going to say like five times in like seven years. It was crazy. Like that's the lesson if you're a young player like that. It's like, who cares about that you lost this one land tomorrow? If you stick together, maybe in three months, you're like twice as good as a squad and now you actually get the org that Dika's talking about and now you suddenly are, so people see the value of your play Players because by sticking together, you like enhance each other's ability to play and you figure out how to make the best out of his play and he figures out the best way to help you play and all of a sudden you all look twice as good as you maybe are. Whereas if you just play this way where every two lands you swap a player, now it's almost like when people really do believe like HLTV stats tell you how good a player is. It's like... What team is he? Like, has he even been in the team long? Is he playing his spots? Is he on the right maps? Like, there's so many variables in Counter-Strike. To me, the first thing you've always got to do is build, like, a team core identity. That's why we even use that term core. Core shouldn't just be the three players that used to be there. It's who makes up the squad. Like, what is the identity of this team? Like, in the in the end squad, for example, they, people would say the core's like all the stuff. Like, just, the core would start with Snappy, for fuck's sake. Obviously, wouldn't it? Like, the joke is, if anything, it's people like nerds that are integrating themselves into the team still. Like, someone like Snappy's the fact foundation of this team so anyway that's why i say one i think they missed the lesson of vp and then two that's why i asked that question the only thing i have never seen in the polish scene is the igls that's the one thing i feel like is missing in that regard and so it's actually sad because i do think there are like especially for riflers mate there are so many good riflers that have come out of the polish scene over the years people if you just watch the pov on like ago and all those these guys were really good mate it's no wonder when you put them in those wsg tournaments and it was like essentially just like fucking who cares like no one gave a shit the amount of times Polish teams have gone deep and that is bonkers, mate. Loads of them have got the money. Loads of them have got the bag. Right. Yeah. But also, I think the next thing we are missing, we are missing coaches. Like, we don't have okay. any... We might have few good ones which know what to do, but we don't have that much people which can trust them. Like Okay. Players, players are not open enough to go out of the comfort zone to work with them to just like accept what they need to do for the team. Trust me, I was like this in the Polish team. Like when I started playing, I didn't want to go out of my comfort zone because I didn't feel good in the game. But I think I did it a bit in Sprout and then I did it more even in this team. And I see that we are winning matches, we are winning events. So I think that's the key. Well, all I'm gonna say is, Taz technically recently did retire. So if he just gets that big quagmire head, pops in, he could he could get something done. Come on, mate. Mm. Get it together. Just get that fucking... Start coaching people. Start teaching them the wisdom. Right, and mate. also, just you'll get their attention when you drive up in that Mercedes or whatever it is. What you say. Doot, doot. All right, boys. <laughs> <laughs> the coach has arrived. <laughs> it's also just disappointing when people don't continue the lineage of teaching the next generation. Oh, it's sad, because- there's just so much knowledge that is never, I mean, and it's, it's not like these people are doing something else that's helping pass that information on. Like they're not making content. They're not writing it down or anything like that. It's just in their head. So yeah, coaching though is like the natural fit. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content. Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.